Oh, five weeks tomorrow. Yeah, five weeks tomorrow the animal will weigh in for the first title fight. Commonwealth title fight against Vicky Wilkinson. Yeah. Undefeated. Fourth undefeated. Um, yeah, Commonwealth title. Commonwealth title. I actually thought... I've got a schedule. I thought that would be your eighth fight. Okay. Um, you could argue that. You could argue it, but we believe the time's ready to do that. And obviously, I'm still learning. Won't be rushed. But... Yeah, Commonwealth title. Hopefully she'll go one better than me. I thought for Commonwealth title, obviously we'll make it about me. But uh, oh, Commonwealth title at the Echo and, and I drew. I drew for it. You won Derry too at the Echo, yeah. Well, actually, it's called the MS Bank Arena now. I always call it the Echo though. Yeah. I know, but it's called the MS Bank Arena. Well, Rhiannon, that's been a heavy, heavy session that we've watched you do this morning. Is that a typical session with Anthony Million Dollar Crawler? Yeah, I mean, you know, he comes in late, he uh, does what he wants, wings in, and then, yeah, that's that's a typical Anthony Crawler session. So life is good. Obviously, normally you're here in, in the gym, there'd be James, your, your big buddy training partner, James Moorcroft, Jake James, there's Bobby, Faulkner, uh, Sahir, Iqbal, who am I missing? And Will, of course. And Levi, uh, it's come now. Levi. Kinsiona is Oh, yes, of yeah. course, from Sheffield. Yeah. Like yeah. So it is a, a bus, Alex de Wagani as well, of course. So it is a kind of a, it's a growing stable, isn't it? I mean, you've seen changes since you've been here. How long have you actually been training with Anthony now? I think it's been two years now. I feel like I've known him ages. Two years of, yeah. of the million dollar man. I know. Well, and do you think you've improved under his, his coaching? Do you know what? I do slag him off a bit, but I actually do feel like I've improved. Like, from uh, watching, like, I don't really like watching my um, fights, but watching old fights and then watching, um, like, my last performance, I can see, yeah, I've definitely um, improved, so I do have to give credit where credit's due to uh, Anne there. Fair enough. Now, the next fight is a big fight. It's a title fight. It's your eighth fight. A lot's made of the fact that, you know, the women do get opportunities a bit quicker. The pool isn't as deep. That's just a fact, isn't it? But well, that's a massive fight for you now at this stage uh, of your career. Uh, again, it's against Wilkinson, isn't it? Yeah. What's, her, what's her first name again? Vicky. Vicky Wilkinson, that's it. And against an unbeaten fighter as well. So what are you expecting this now? Every fight's a step up, and that's definitely the case with this one, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think all my last previous opponents, like when we went to Bilbao, all of them have been um, step ups, and I feel like I've been learning, you know, um, throughout all the different camps and in the fights and that's what I need to do because obviously I didn't have the massive amateur career I think I only had seven white collar fights so I am practically learning on the job so I do think that I do need to take fights like this so that I can learn um, so I am really excited for it I mean the opportunity came and and, and Paul and Dom like all thought I was ready for it so I trust them and I'm just really excited to get back out there again in Liverpool so Mm -hmm. And that's the thing a lot of people don't really understand that. There's no amateur background with yourself. Yeah. You, you, you went into the white collar scene and you managed to get where you've, you, you've got to already, which is pretty phenomenal really, isn't it? Yeah, I feel like um, like my mum and dad still don't understand it because obviously like my brother and my brother-in-law have been the athletes of the family, but whereas actually like I'm fighting for a title, and mm. um, so I never thought that they expected it because obviously I went to university and did pharmacy for five years, and then I was working as a pharmacist in a hospital, and obviously throughout COVID, like this never thought I never thought that this would be my reality, you know, training full time mm. now, but it's come, and I'm only young once, so I'm just gonna you know take it and uh, run with it because I don't want to look back and think, oh, have I got any regrets of not, not taking these chances, so. Yeah, and you mentioned uh, your brother your brother-in-law, for those that don't know, rugby league professionals, so just tell us where they are, what they're up to at the minute. So my brother-in-law's at Lee, I think they've changed the name now, I think they were Lee Centurions and I think they're like Lee Panthers now. Leopards. Uh, Lee Leopards, are they in Super League? Yeah, and uh, my brother is at so what, Salford. What, what's, what's his name, your brother-in-law? Oh, what's Joe Meller. Yeah, yeah. Um, and my brother's Andrew uh, Dixon, so mm. come from a very sporty family. Um, but I think I think I am the athlete of the family now. They're all living in my shadow, so... I see, I see. So <laughs> is, is, the, is the game then to be the, the best boxer to ever come out of Warrington? Yeah. Uh, the the, the um, aim is... When my dad goes out and he like brags about my brother, it's yeah. for him to brag about me first and be like, my daughter's a Commonwealth champion, so that's the aim. You're not there that yet then, in your no. dad's affections? No, still no, got to I do think that I'm, one. I'm third on the list because it's like my brother, then my sister's got a baby, so ah, she's right, higher up okay. on the list. And I obviously can't have a baby because I'm boxing, so I'm like third mentioned. Okay, so you win this Commonwealth title, which is, is not too far away, and as you say, in Liverpool. So, again, because you're, you're from Warrington, so 
you, obviously you've boxed in Manchester, there's Liverpool. Where do you kind of stand then in your allegiance? Because you're bang in the middle, obviously, as, as someone from Warrington. Yeah, it's really weird because I went to like college in St Helens, and like I know people are like, that's not Liverpool, but we always went on a night, like nights out in Liverpool. Yeah. So I felt like, oh, I'm more Liverpool. But then I went to university in Manchester and started going out there, and now I'm training in Manchester. But I just feel like I'm more in the middle. Um, Ross says I've got like a slow version of a Scouse accent. He says I don't sound like I'm from Warrington. But your dad's a Mancunian though, isn't he? Yeah, well, they're both from St. Helens, but then they oh, lived right, in Manchester. Right, right, and my right. brother and sister were born here. Right. Um, so, I don't know, I'm, I'm like both. But there's no football chat going on for you. You're not bothered about any of that. Because well, obviously Crawler won't have you in the gym if you're Liverpool. Well... I did say this year I was going to start supporting Liverpool right. and my sponsors, Lumpty, took me to my first football match, right. Liverpool, and right. I actually really like it, but then they started losing so they said I'm not allowed to support them anymore. Right, which kind of proves you're not really bothered. Yeah. All right, fair enough. Now, this Commonwealth title fight, what's the plan? I mean, it's the start of the year still, but by the time you have this fight, you're well into it kind of. What, every fight wants to be active. Do you have these discussions already now? What's next after that? And not overlooking opponents, but what's the plan in terms of you know where you want to be at the end of the year with titles and stuff? Yeah, I mean, obviously, like a lot of other girls want to rush to world titles. Whereas, like I've said before, you know, I'm learning on the job basically, and I do want to master. Like I'm, this is going to be my first time round, so I want to master like ten rounds. And obviously, all the world titles are with yeah. Katie, and she's with Serrano, and I just want to kind of like every fight just learn more and uh, have you know like different tests with different types of opponents so yeah it's just like everyone says staying active but um no i hopefully i could get out like four or five times this year and uh, just with every fight just get better and better maybe different types of titles i think you can do like intercontinentals and yep. internationals and things like that so i think that would be like the route for me i think i'm going you mentioned Katie and Serrano, obviously, uh, as a lightweight. You know, they're, they're the names, they're the, the massive, massive yeah. star names in the division. But, as you say, belt's tied up. But it's all about timing as well, isn't it? You're only 27. So, yeah. by they're going to be probably, what would you think, a year or two, and then they're not on the scene? I mean, do you, would you want to face them, or is it a case of, let's get them out of the way, actually, and then, <laughs> then I'll try and get involved in all that? Um, I don't know. I think I'll, like, cross that bridge when it comes to it. Obviously, you know, everyone wants to fight the best in women's. You see mm. that with, like, all these mega fights that are happening. And if you got the opportunity to fight Katie Taylor for Undisputed, like, who wouldn't want to take that chance? Yeah. But obviously right now, like, that's not in my, like, vision at the moment whatsoever because, like I said, how many amateur fights did she have and she's been... Mm. Undisputed for so long, and I'm there with seven white qualifiers. Like, I want to fight Katie. But, but you're no. mates with Katie anyway, aren't you? You've met we, her a few times, haven't you? I've embarrassed myself very many times in front of what? Katie. Tell us, tell us what happened there. Oh, so it was when um, she was being announced against fighting Serrano, and then I'm like, I was staring at her when I went because I was like, oh my god, Katie Taylor's there. Like, why is she here? Because I think she fought in Liverpool the week before. And then I was like, oh, I think it was you. You Or oh, Anne said, oh, I'll go and introduce you to her. So like, my heart was pounding. I was like, oh, my God, I've got to do this press conference. I'm already scared of that. And then now I've got to go and meet Katie. Like, and then she was like, oh, you're a Southpaw, aren't you? And I was like, oh, my God, she knows who I am. And she was like, yeah, I'd love to get some sparring. I was like, fuck off. <laughs> and then... I nice know, to some, meet you too. Yeah, someone was filming it and they were like, Katie, uh, Rihanna Dixon tells Katie Taylor to fuck off. And I was like, and so then I saw her in the change rooms after my fight and I went, I hope you know I didn't tell you to fuck off. Like, I wasn't, I was saying it like I didn't know you'd want to spar me. Like, obviously, I really want to spar you. And then, yeah. And then I embarrassed myself again because I asked her to go for a drink and then everyone was just like, Rihanna, no. Well, she doesn't drink because she, she lives the life, obviously, but um, I, I don't think she'd be offended by that. That's a fair enough question, in fairness. Yeah, maybe in the future she might just avoid me because she, she might think I'm a bit weird, but yeah, well, if you're watching this, KA, yeah, I'm not weird. I just get a bit starstruck around you. Yeah, well, <laughs> she's, she's, she's an absolute legend. Yeah. That, that's banded around too much. So uh, so that's the plan, then. Obviously, you can bide your time, keep learning. You're, you're the only woman in this gym as well. And yeah. you seem to deal with them all all right. Obviously, you have to put up with a lot of nonsense in here, don't you? Yeah. I mean, how bad does it get? Or who do you have to really kind of give a little bit of a slap to when, when you get the worst. chance? See? Yeah, so inspiring. That's when we take out. Did you see the post you put about me the other day? No. Where he said he dropped me with a headshot and a body shot. And my mum was like, Rhiannon, did he actually knock you out? I was like, did he how? <laughs> there you go. Well, the life and times of training in Anthony Million Dollar Crawler's gym. <laughs> I didn't say that right, but anyway. Thank you, Rhiannon. Yeah.